I'm Trevor James, Senior Resource Scientist of Tasman District Council. My responsibility is our freshwater monitoring and restoration, both wetlands, streams and lakes. I have the privilege of leading two freshwater improvement fund projects and this one is all about fish passage. So fish passage is an issue uh, because our, many of our native species, in fact uh, uh, two thirds of our fish species, need to migrate from the sea to our inland water, waterways as part of their life cycle. When you have a structure such as a culvert or a weir or a dam or sometimes bridges, they can create a barrier to that passage and uh, subsequently the fish populations in the rivers upstream are severely depleted. In this video we introduce you to a five-year project to help landowners in Tasman District comply with the rules for structures that are put in streams. These structures, as I said, include culverts. Culverts make up about 70% of all in-stream barriers to fish passage. These are very common across our district. In fact, we think we have about seven to 8,000 of them throughout the district from Golden Bay, Tasman Bay and through into the Upper Buller catchment. The video will describe why fish passage is so important and what we are going to focus on in the project. We'll give a few examples also. This project is valued at over three, sorry, over two million dollars. We acknowledge our iwi partners in this process and also landowners for their support. In the vast majority of cases we will be able to remediate the structure at no cost to the landowner. However, if there is an in-stream structure that is a, a large structure usually and it needs significant cost to remediate or replace, then we will probably need to seek some co-funding. Following the completion of this project in about 2026, this funding uh, will run out. Like the wetland restoration project, this project is exciting not only for its improvement to the health of our waterways and the uh, biodiversity of our fish communities, but also exciting that it's a joint partnership with iwi. So the objectives of this project are to improve Mahinga Kai. So this, uh, when you get more white bait, you get uh, more happy white baiters. Uh, more tuna, um, <clears throat> more fish for uh, consuming on the, on the table. So the Māori, the, sport, the spiritual quality of our waterways, really important culturally. The biodiversity not only improves the fish communities and invertebrate communities, but also birds and other uh, species as well. Here in these slides you see a banded kokopu at the top making its way over a shallow concrete plinth and in the lower photograph a small alva, a young eel, making its way up a concrete uh, structure. So our targets for this program are to assess at least 4,300 structures and of those we hope to remediate about 1,500. Most of these remediations are easy and I'll show you some photographs later of how we do it. So I'll just introduce you to uh, what we've done over the last uh, 15, 16 years. Um, each year we have uh, remediated about 100 structures and uh, assessed um, several hundred more. Often it's only been with a budget of 12,000 a year and 150 hours of staff time. We've opened up 800 kilometres of stream for fish migration in about the last 10 years. We've tried to work getting the council's own house in order first by fixing the uh, structures on council roads and parks and reserves. We have provided a service to landowners and uh, any other um, <clears throat> uh, community organisation. We've prioritised broad areas and have worked systematically across those areas. So 
Uh, Golden Bay, for example, is a particularly important uh, for its freshwater biodiversity. Uh, we're by, by no means finished in that area, but we certainly have um, finished the in-stream structures on council land and council roads. So um, here is a culvert in Wainui Bay on the left, what it looked like uh, originally with a um, spurt of water coming out of the culvert and a big void of air underneath. Fish cannot uh, jump into the culvert and um, they cannot climb up on the dry behind the culvert. So there's no way of getting across here. Some eels will cross the road on a wet day, maybe at night, but they certainly can't cross through these sorts of um, undercut overhanging culverts. On the right, the photograph is a uh, concrete ramp that was constructed to provide passage up to it. We often are um, uh, uh, moving away from these concrete ramps as being a lot more expensive and moving to where we can at least, um, more cheap um, but still effective solutions. So here are some culverts where we've bolted on a conveyor belt and uh, that has got um, low velocity water on the margins of the, the belt and that is um, providing the fish passage uh, up through into the culvert. Uh, so fish are, um, th there are some species such as Bandicokapu and Kuaro that have very wide flat pectoral and anal fins and they just um, make their way up these even vertical surfaces with these um, uh, their pectoral and anal fins and they suck onto the structures. They only need a wet film of water um, to get up on. <clears throat> so uh, don't worry if the, the structure has a vertical surface and it's inland in steeper country because these fish will probably uh, get up and through. Uh, so it may not just be the direct outlet of the culvert but it might be an apron such as this on the end that gets undercut. Sometimes it's um, water takes, sometimes it's weirs. <clears throat> and this is another solution that we've used when there's a culvert that uh, um, is undercut and overhanging and plunges into a, a deep pool. This is a floating ramp and uh, you can see the textured surface on this ramp has cusps about uh, five centimetres tall and uh, there's a row of these. And um, there are videos on the New Zealand Fish Passage Advisory Group website that shows Inanga um, racing up through these ramps uh, as if um, it's no problem at all. Whereas you can have a ramp on the same angle and the same velocity of water but without those um, bumps or cusps on them and these fish get part way up, maybe a third, a half way up if they're lucky and then they get swept back down and they try and try and try but cannot get up. So these cusps create those little um, lower velocity zones, break up that flow. <clears throat> uh, so there's several videos here that you can go on to to, um, to see these uh, uh, fish in action. <clears throat> so sometimes within the culvert you have high velocity water and the fish just cannot make it um, through that water. So we try and create uh, little resting spots but by putting in baffles. Um, so we mostly use flexible baffles that fold down uh, when the flow gets up and they, they're uh, useful because they don't trap uh, debris. Um, branches or so forth. In a flood they'll just fold down and um, the debris will get uh, swept through so that has a great advantage of um, making sure these culverts do not block. Tide gates are very important as well. We do need to start at the bottom of the catchment and work all the way up to the headwaters. This is a, a project where we have to work to completion in a catchment and we very value um, all the landowners in a catchment coming together and uh, <clears throat> providing a, a pathway forward to, to uh, solve fish passage in these catchments. We have ways to um, manage these fish friendly tide gates as well. A little bit more technical, but we say that to another day. 
So this is designing a really good culvert where the, bit, the base of the culvert is uh, well below the bed of, of the culvert um, and uh, it's got, uh, it, uh, it's flooded, the water is flooded right through that system and the velocity is really low. Okay, the next steps for this project are to recruit a project manager, then uh, coming in June, July this year, 2021, we hope to put out tenders both for auditing and training uh, for those workers on the ground who will do the assessment and remediation. Probably be a three-person team uh, with an apprentice and two uh, uh, well-trained uh, staff leading the team. And then monitoring of six particular structures where we'll look at uh, the fish life at, uh, upstream and downstream of the culvert before and after the remediation and uh, upstream and downstream as I say. So uh, we will put out the, uh, this work for tender and, uh, so, and if you're on the supply panel you can certainly uh, apply uh, for that work. So again I'd like to acknowledge uh, our iwi partners and landowners and uh, really look forward to really making a difference through this Freshwater Improvement Fund project funded by the government through Ministry for the Environment. Kia ora, thank you.